balanced ration. Now, we live in a day and age, and I don't want to offend anybody, okay? I'm just giving you information, so don't be upset with the messenger. We live in a day and age where we've had so much emphasis on organic feeds, organic rations, all natural rations, and a lot of the organic baby chick rations, they're organic, but they're not necessarily nutritionally what those baby chicks need. Um, I, I had one particular customer that bought sunflower seeds because he heard that sunflower seeds were, you know, had great nutrition and great protein, and he was just grinding them himself, and he was putting them into the feed ration to feed his baby chicks. And about two weeks in, he called me, and he, he actually sent me an email with a picture, and all of his baby chicks looked like they'd swallowed a bowling ball. I mean, they had this big bulge out in front, and they were not growing. They weren't developing well. And what had happened is that the fiber... Those birds just weren't old enough to be able to digest the fiber of this. I mean, when I eat sunflower seeds, okay, it's the difference in when you chew the whole seed up, you got all that shell in there, and it's, you know, you got to chew and chew and chew and chew and chew to get it where you can swallow it, or you feel like you're swallowing a haystack. That will lodge in the, in the little gizzards. And he said, well, I put grit in. Well, baby chicks' gizzards are so small that once they get grit in them, there's not a whole lot of room for them to get nutrition in, and everything bottlenecks right there. And so we tell folks, it's okay to, to, you know, we emphasize, don't feed a medicated chick starter unless you have to. If your birds are healthy, skip the medicated feed. Feed them an all-natural source. We recommend Purina Flock Razor. We've done feed trials. We found the best feed on the market today is a product made by Purina called Flock Razor. It's, it's a completely balanced ration, and they don't just have that 19% or 20% protein on the label. It's actually the kinds of amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, that they need. Methionine and lysine, they have to have a good supply of that for them to grow and be healthy. And so we ought to say, go with a balanced ration, because chickens need the right diet for the right stage of development. Um, Purina flock razor is all natural, okay? which means that they don't add in animal byproducts, they don't boost their fat by adding in animal fats, they don't boost the protein by adding in bone meal or something like that, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but what they do is they use plant proteins, and the biggest thing that we noticed was we, get to, we took birds, we took 150 Rhode Island red baby chicks, divided them into five pens, okay, and we fed five different rations. By 12 weeks of age, the ones that were on Purina and Flock Razor, and by the way, I don't work for Purina, and I'm not advertising their product. I just know what works. The ones that were on Purina Flock Razor didn't look like they were even related to the other four pins. Mm -hmm. Their feathers were, were, were more mature for, for the same age group. Uh, they were larger in stature. Uh, the color on their feathers was vibrant and deep and rich. We had some that uh, we went with a lesser expensive ration. We had some, Those birds weren't even completely feathered. Their feathers were dull. Uh, the feathers were very brittle. They, they, they broke a lot just with regular activity. Get a good balanced ration that's specifically meant for the dietary need of that age group. Okay? And you'll have a lot less problems with them. Okay? Um, you're, if you buy organic baby chick feed, really pay close attention to the nutrition label. Even if you take it and compare it to the Purina Flock Razor label to make sure that you're getting a, a comparable product. But just know that a lot of the organic baby chick feeds, um, they're, they're basically choosing from what they have available nutritionally that's organic to grind into a feed, and a lot of the times it does cause some nutritional problems. Okay? Um, you want to make sure that they have lots of water, clean and fresh and constant. Also, on the food, you never want them to run out of food unless you're raising meat chickens. Anybody in here planning on raising birds for meat? Okay, all right. Um, if you get the Cornish cross broilers, which are the ones specifically designed, and by the way, they are only for me, okay? They won't live. If you let them grow into adult birds, they won't live very long because of how much weight they will gain and how big they'll get. Um, but you want to make sure and feed them 12 hours on, 12 hours off, because they will overeat and it will cause growth problems, okay? So we tell folks that we say, whatever's easiest for you. If you want to put the feed in in the morning before you go to work and take it out when you get home, that's fine. If you want to put it in when you get home from work and take it out the next morning, but don't let them have access to feed 24 hours around the clock because they will they will overeat. Okay, all of your other breeds they need to have access to that food anytime they get a little hungry. They ought to walk over to the feeder and have fresh water and fresh feed that they can that they can eat. Okay, that'll help them grow mature and, and develop accurately. Grazing and ranging. 
Um, there's so much I could go into on this. Uh, it, let me just say this. Chickens are not the only ones that like to free range. Foxes, coyotes, your neighbor's dogs, hawks, owls. Uh, this year has been a bumper crop year for the great horned owl, okay? And for everybody that loves great horned owls, hey, you know, I'm happy for you as a bumper crop. For those of us who own poultry, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Uh, we have customers calling us saying, I let the birds out for the first time today. And, you know, my kids are all crying because this big owl just swooped down. They're big enough, they can, and when they hit a chicken, they hit them with such force it kills them almost instantly and they just fly away. And it can happen in an instant. So if you're going to range or you're going to, to free range or you're going to let your hens graze, make sure that they're kept safe, okay? A chicken tractor is a good way to do that. That's a mobile pen that you move them to fresh grass each day. You move the pen around all over the yard. That's a great way to do it and it keeps predators out. Um, what we do with our birds, we let them out in the afternoon because we found if you let them out in the morning, that's when predators are on the prowl. They're wanting to get, particularly owls. A lot of people think, well, don't they hunt at night? Yes, they hunt at night, but early in the morning, they're trying to find a meal they can take back to the nest and feed the owlets off of all day long. Um, foxes, coyotes, all that stuff, they, the bobcats, bobcats are early morning hunters more than any other time. They are prowling to, you know, they've woken up, they're hungry, they're looking for something to eat. What we do, we have found we have fewer losses to predators if we will range, uh, range, if we will range or, or graze the birds late in the afternoon. The other benefit to that is we encourage the hens to put their eggs in the nest, not scatter them all over the yard somewhere. And most of the birds are going to lay by 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The birds have already deposited their egg. So they leave their egg in the nest, and then along about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll let them out one free range for a while. Okay? Make sure that this is not their only source of nutrition. Okay? And again, this goes back to trying to be as organic or as natural as possible. Grass, six to eight, maybe 10% protein. Uh, grains that they're picking off things, four to 6% protein. The egg that that hen's producing is, is you know, predominantly protein. And if you're gonna get protein out, you have to make sure that protein's going in, okay? And they may be, again, happy. They may be happier with this food because it's what they like but it's like setting, you know, for my nine-year-old, if I set down a plate of broccoli and I set down a plate of candy and say, you choose, I guarantee you which plate is going to empty first, okay? So you want to make sure that their primary diet is still this balanced ration that gives them the protein and the vitamins and the minerals and the essential nutrients that they need to stay in production and stay healthy. And then when they graze, it's perfectly okay. They can go out and get their carbs where they'd like to get them. I want to make sure they're getting the protein before they get their carbs. Okay? And it's a great way to keep them healthy and keep them in production. Grains and fruit. We've sold, um, every year we sell, because we run a hatchery, every year we sell our one-year-old hens. Okay? Because we're raising their replacements. By year two, the eggs get too large to fit in our incubators. We end up losing a lot of capacity. We also have a higher instance of double yoked eggs which don't hatch well. So we'll sell our yearling hens. They're in full production at the time we sell them. People will buy them, they'll get them home, and about six weeks later, I'll get a call and I say, they've stopped laying. <coughs> and it's well past the point in time that they would have already acclimated to their new environment. The first question I ask is, what are you feeding them? Well, I'm buying scratch grain down at the co-op. Okay, what else are you feeding them? Oh, nothing. Well, scratch grains are going to have 6 to 8% protein. They need 16% protein in their dietary ration in order to produce eggs on a regular basis. So if you're only feeding them 6 to 8% protein, you may only get one egg a week or one egg every two weeks versus if you're feeding them the protein they need, you're gonna be getting that, you know, four to five eggs a week out of them, okay? So there are some fruits that have high pectin levels and the pectin, when they digest it, mimics the hormone that will cause them to go broody and they'll stop laying. So you can give them table scraps and you can give them treats. You wanna be really careful about what kind of fruits you give them, okay? Uh, Bananas, they love bananas, and bananas don't cause any problem. Pears, peaches, apples, apple peelings, and it affects some breeds more than others, some birds within a breed more than others, but just note, if you've just given your birds a big treat of fruit, and all of a sudden your egg production stops, just make a little note, okay, no more of that particular type of fruit for them, okay? Because it will stop production. Yes? I was gonna say, I have like 